During the pandemic, the United States lost its place as the country with the most billionaires. China now holds that record. The number of billionaires in China increased by 258, an increase of 32 percent. It now has a third of the world's total billionaires, surpassing the next three countries combined, the United States, India, and Germany. However, being a billionaire in China comes with risks and dangers. In fact, it might be one of the most dangerous jobs in China, with higher than usual mortality rates. Hello everyone, welcome to my show, I'm Lei. China now is the only country with over 1,000 billionaires, 1,058 of them to be exact, according to the Hurun China Rich List of 2021. That's a wonderful accomplishment, right? But in China, having so much money is very dangerous. Compared with ordinary people, Chinese billionaires have a higher chance of being investigated, sent to prison, losing personal freedom, or dying from unnatural causes. And it's been going on for decades. Six years ago, in November 2015, the German newspaper Der Spiegel had an article, Why do rich people in China live dangerously? To investigate, I did some calculations and analysis. In July 2011, a Chinese reporter named Li Yanchen analyzed the unnatural deaths of wealthy Chinese whose net worth was more than 100 million yuan or 50 million dollars. Based on public data from 2003 to 2011, he found that 19 of them died prematurely, 17 of suicide and 7 from accidents. In addition, 14 were executed and 15 died of homicide. Based on his data and Hurun's data, I calculated wealthy Chinese mortality rates and compared them to China's national average during the same period. For the wealthy Chinese, the mortality rate is about the same as average Chinese at 144 deaths per 100,000 people versus 137 per 100,000. When we look at the breakdown, however, the numbers are telling. Wealthy Chinese are half as likely to commit suicide and only a third as likely to die from accidents when compared with average Chinese citizens. But they are three times more likely to die from homicide and three times more likely to die prematurely. And most alarmingly, they are 10 times more likely to receive capital punishment sentences and be executed. China's national average for capital punishment was 2.5 in a million people, but the average for wealthy Chinese is 25 in a million. We all know statistics coming out of China aren't accurate in the first place. The reporter's numbers might also be understated, but my point here is not about the actual mortality rates, but rather it's about a comparative or relational study of the mortality rates between two groups of Chinese people. In most countries, people are happy to see their names on a list of the wealthiest citizens, but not in China. There, the discovery of one's name on the Hurun rich list causes uneasiness and fear. According to Der Spiegel, the Hurun China rich list has brought bad luck to many of the super rich, and Chinese call the Hurun list the list of slaughtered pigs. Hurun is the Chinese name of an Englishman, Rupert Hoogeworth. Rupert studied and worked in China and speaks Chinese fluently. In 1999, when Beijing celebrated the 50th anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China, Hu Ren published the first list of China's 50 richest people. It was called the 50 Years 50 List. He has since published the list every year and expanded the company, which is based in Shanghai and Mumbai now. To defend the slaughtered pig's reputation, in 2009, which was 10 years after the first report was released, Huren published a special report to keep track of the wealthy Chinese who got into trouble with the regime. It claimed that the handful of people who were investigated, imprisoned, or died amounted to only less than 2% of the total on the list. The latest special report from 2015 stated that in the 17 years of the report's history, only 35 were problem billionaires, of which 18 had been jailed, 5 had yet to be sentenced, 
and one was executed. Hu Ren claimed that this was only 1% out of roughly 3,200 people. I calculated this based on his numbers and my findings are consistent. If one person out of a group of 3,200 was executed in 17 years, you would have 312 people executed for every million people. That's still roughly 10 times higher than China's national average during the 17 years. From 1999 to 2021, Hurun identified 14 billionaires who topped the list and were called the richest people in China. However, a handful of them have been in trouble with the regime. Huang Guangyu, the founder of Guomei, an electronic retailer, topped the rich list three times in 2004, 2005, and 2008. Huang became the richest man in China when he was only 36 years old. He was a torchbearer at the 2008 Beijing Olympic Games. However, immediately afterward, he was arrested and sentenced to 14 years in prison for illegal business operations. According to Chinese state media reports, Huang actively played a capital game in China and Hong Kong to grow his wealth exponentially. Ye Tan, a Chinese financial commentator, believes that Huang's trouble with the authorities was due to his bypassing the government's strict capital review to move capital back and forth between the mainland and Hong Kong. Ye called Huang's problem a serious confrontation between business efficiency and China's system. Wang Jianlin, the owner of Wanda Group, a real estate company and the richest man in China in 2013, 15, and 16, was famous for his buying sprees outside China. According to incomplete statistics, from 2012 to the beginning of 2017, Wanda made over 20 large investments in Europe, America, India, and Australia, with a total investment of $30 billion including AMC theaters and Hollywood's legend entertainment. Three companies, HNA, Anbang, and Wanda, were investigated by authorities for their exuberant overseas investments. As a result, both Wanda's stock and bonds were hit. Its Wanda cinema stock was suspended for trading after a crazy sell-off, and rumor had it that Wang was not allowed to leave China. Another famous alumnus of the Huren Richest Men list is the founder of e-commerce giant Alibaba, Jack Ma. Ma held the title for four years. The IPO of his company, Ant Group, was suspended by the regime and he had been missing for a few months until recently. Another famous person is Evergrande's founder, Hui Ka Yan. Hui was the richest man in China in 2017 and is now struggling with his falling real estate empire. Bloomberg recently reported that Beijing told Hui to use his personal wealth to address his company's debt problems. Various Chinese commentators have said that to avoid the regime's attention, some wealthy Chinese pay Hu Ren any amount so as not to be listed. Some even claim that this is the report's main source of income. I have no way to verify that, but I know that the list certainly does not include all of the wealthy people in China. For the most part, it's missing some very wealthy Chinese, government officials and their families, and the princelings, for example. I don't think Hu Ren can afford to include them, though. If he did, he'd be kicked out of China. That's why his list focuses only on private business people. In the most recent Huren 2021 list, for the first time, no Chinese real estate tycoons made the top 10 list. Tech giants such as Jack Ma and Tencent's Pony Ma dropped their rankings to number 4 and number 5. The 67-year-old Zhong Shanshan, the founder of Nongfu Spring Water, became the richest Chinese with a fortune of $65 billion, ranking 7th in the world. Zhong also founded a publicly listed vaccine manufacturer, Wantai Bio, which currently has a market value of more than 10 US billion dollars. Chinese have joked that when Beijing is in need of cash, 
It checks the Hurun list and picks a few pigs to slaughter. I don't know how Zhong Shan Shan feels about being on the top of the slaughter list. I made a few videos about Jack Ma and the billionaire founders of Evergrande and HNA. Also check my channel for a few videos on the world's wealthiest man, Elon Musk, and his relations with Beijing. That's all we'll say about billionaires today. See you next time.